Jack Midday here with a little bit of a funner video. Now, uh, this is going to be my attempt at making a World War I style uniform out of my collection right now. So as you see, I've already gotten it started with the most difficult parts that take a long time, and I will describe what I am wearing right now. First is the World War II era M37 wool shirt. This is what I have right now, along with a green t-shirt underneath. This is somewhat kind of what they would be issued, not really. The color would match pretty much, and that'd be pretty much it. And I'm not too sure about the design of it. I've seen ones that are just um, pretty much just like a shirt. Buttons go down to here, and it's not a full button down, but I don't know if those were just private purchase or not. But, so next, I have the 1917 breeches. As you can see, there's a little bit of, a good amount of extra fabric here to make the pants wider for some reason. It is quite stylish, to be honest. And these are original pants. I'm very surprised that they fit me. Nonetheless, the condition of them are amazing, but I would never use these in combat, just dressy. It would just be a dress uh, part. Next, I have the standard World War II era rough out boots. They're pretty much the same kind of boot, but with a rubber sole on the bottom instead of hobnails. And it also, as you might have seen, I have putties on my leg, wrapped all the way up. They're also original putties, and they do look quite British. So, the putties are on the boots. So far, it looks okay, in my opinion. I will be getting more World War I stuff eventually, but again, this video is just more for fun. Next I have the standard issue USM 1928 haversack. One notable, noticeable thing that I would change if I was still going to use this is I would change the mess tin, uh, mess kit cover pouch right here. I would change that to be the World War I version with the button and not the uh, whatever, whatever that thing is. But on the inside, I do have a World War I mess kit. So that is one thing that is accurate on this haversack. Next, the tool that I am issued is a 1910 T-handle shovel. As you see, it has the plain wood handles, not the painted ones like in World War II, but they're the plain wood like in World War I, which is more accurate. To the air. Next, uh, let me just prop this thing up. The World War One sheath, right here, for the M1905 bayonet. It's supposed to have wood in it. I will eventually get wood in it, but right now it's just the canvas outer cover. And because my haversack is breaking constantly, it keeps coming unlooped from the haversack. Give me a second. There we go. But inside, I have the standard issue 05 bayonet with the wood handles. They were, they were cop, um, no, not copper, chrome plated when they were issued. But they were, when they got out on the field, they were ordered to color them to make them darker and less shiny. So they would be harder to spot, and there was really no reason for them to be that shiny. Attached to the belt, I have the standard M1928 cartridge belt, which is pretty similar to the World War I version. There was World War I version, the most iconic one with the little ripples in the bottom. And there was another one which was pretty much like this, but this buckle right here was flat instead of rounded, like on the World War II style. Canteen cover, this is an M1910 style canteen cover with original World War One canteen and cup in there. Which the cup and the canteen pretty much identical to World War Two, except in World War Two the cap would be plastic. Which again, these canteens were seen often in World War Two as well, just as reissue 
So, things. And on the other side, I just have the standard 1928 style um, medical pouch. So, I'll put that on and hope the bayonet doesn't come unhooked again. So, this is it right now. As you can tell from the front, you can't really see too much of a difference other than this little buckle right here. But the back is where you can really see the difference with the pouch and the haversack. But again, like I said, this video is going to be farb and I, you would not use this stuff in actual reenactments. Usually, there would be videos on there about using World War II, uh, World War I stuff for World War II. But we are doing this in reverse, so this is very farb. Next, we take our World War I M1917 helmet. Oh, wrong one. M1917 helmet. As you see, it has a net liner with a felt pad at the bottom, leather chin strap, and oil cloth around the pretty much acting as a sweatband. Oh, let me just find the front, put this thing on, and there it is right now. And you see I'm in front of a 48 star flag, which would be accurate for World War I and World War II. And I would be issued with the 05 Springfield for what I have compared to it, a stock for an 05 Springfield, or 03 Springfield. I'm sorry. So, this is pretty much one of the things they could have been issued as standard infantrymen. This is what it would somewhat look like. Very farb indeed. But for now, this is what I have. We'll be getting more. As time comes along, we will I'll find more stuff or eventually just get more stuff. But for now, this is that. Now there is a another piece of my collection that I can use, which is original to World War One, and that is the 1910 uh, pistol belt with 45 pouch and 1916 dated holster. So as you would see, well, first of all, the holster is on upside down, so that's a problem. Let me just kind of fix that. But both in World War I and in World War II, things were attached via these little hooks right here. And they once they're on, they're on, but they're a pain in the butt a lot of the times. So attaching this, you would also want to make sure the hook ends are facing outwards because you don't want them getting hooked on your clothes. Just like that. All right, now that that, will, that dilemma is out of the way, this is a pistol belt original. I can't find the date, but it is definitely World War I style. Because as you can see, that would be on the uh, cartridge belt as well, that flat buckle right there. It is in, these things are in great condition for the age of them. They look pretty much unissued and like they were just stored perfectly in a barn or somewhere. It, it looks like something out of, muse out of a museum. The buckles or the eyelets still have all the paint on them. The holster, as you can see, there's a little bit of wear to it, but it, you can tell it was kept in very nice condition. And the 45 pouch, again, still has all the paint on it. It is dated 1918, and it still has the original papers in it on how to take care of your magazines. So keep that in there. So that, and this stuff was a real nice find, and I would see more, an officer more wearing this, but as you can see, then you'd be issued your standard 1911 pistol. This is an airsoft one, as you can tell. So it has the orange tip on it. Plug that in. Put that in. And there we go. There's nothing that could have been issued. 
more for like rear troops, runners, and officers. Because well, officers, they'd usually just carry a pistol, and runners, you want to have as light, want to be light, so you can run across the field, run areas without being weighed down. So this belt with a pistol is a lot heavier, or a lot lighter, than a haversack and cartridge belt loaded with ammo and a heavy rifle. So, this is the other thing that could have been issued, and this is my what I'd be attempting as a doughboy. Well, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. A little fun, a little bit of a, just a quick fun video. If you like, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I, this is not all I do. I do also gear tips and stuff. You can, I have playlists down. If you look at my channel, I have playlists organizing all the videos. So if you're looking for like how to pack your hair sack, you'd go into gear tips and find that video. There's a newer one and an older one. So if you want the newer one, just look at the dates. And also you could probably tell by the quality of the video because the first How to Pack Your Harvest Sack was like my third or second or third video. So, this is the gear that I have for now. And I will see you guys later.